Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Gaming Telecom video. Let us further discuss the Xbox One. Microsoft are figuring out what things have worked and what things have not worked, according to Harvey Eagle, who is the UK's marketing director over at Xbox. So we've just discussed the fact that Titanfall Bundle has indeed been announced in the UK for three nine nine, um, but Harvey has actually mentioned a few other key points in a recent interview. Now he said, "I want to be honest. There are some things that haven't worked out as well as what as what they were intended to. We had a lot of feedback from our community about that." The March system update will improve party chat. It will turn on by default. You'll be able to chat with friends across different games. You'll be able to get to your friends list much easier. And there will now be a home page from the friends app. And they also want to make sure that all the friends list, all the invite um, applications and functionality is ready to go by the time Titanfall is released. Now, one area of controversy with the Xbox One, even before the system actually saw the light of day when Microsoft first unveiled it, was the TV. Many people were left with a WTF expression, like, why are they speaking about TV so much? It's supposed to be a games console unveiling. And so, it was probably even more of a bitter pill, because in the EU, in other words, the PAL television, uh, well... The Xbox One wasn't its friend, if you forgive the slight pun. And indeed, there were huge issues with television uh, viewing on the Xbox One. Uh, particularly for, for, say, live sports or, in some cases, some action sequences within films and that type of thing. This is simply due, due to the um, refresh rate of uh, PAL versus NTSC. However... There is going to be an update. Apparently Microsoft has been working on it and it will be resolved in a matter of weeks as one of the updates that we make to the console. So it's going to be some point within spring. That's been confirmed, but the exact day I can't tell you because they've not announced it yet. So moving back to games. <clears throat> well, one of the problems that the Xbox has had and quite a few really big um, names in the gaming industry. A lot of uh, journalists have started to rant on Microsoft's uh, doorstep, if you will, is the so-called premium titles. Now, the basic premise is that you get titles which are riddled with microtransactions. And that's not to say that Microsoft are the only ones who are responsible for this. One of the other major contenders, of course, was Gran Turismo. But let's talk about Microsoft for a while. And uh, Eagle has pointed out, and I quote, We're trying out a number of different business models to understand what is best for us and best for gamers. You're not going to get everything right the first time. We're still at the stage of experimenting and trying new things out. As we learn for the community, we put uh, on things going forward. There's a huge appetite for big commercial AAA games. If you get it right, look at GTA 5. But obviously developers are looking at other ways to monetize, and I think that will carry on. Now, I've actually got some really big problems with that because it's actually more a case of where they just want to see what they can kind of get away with in that respect. And I know that might sound a bit cynical, but I feel the same pretty much of any of these AAA releases. I don't have any issues with DLC. DLC, fine. Give me DLC all day long. Kasumi's stolen memory from Mass Effect, fantastic. The Viathan DLC, fantastic. As much as people bitch and whine about certain aspects of Electronic Arts, a lot of their DLC, they do do quite well. And DLC now is becoming a really big deal. Capcom have recently unveiled that like 17% of its profits from retail games actually came in the form of DLC. And I don't have any problems with it. If you give me some good extra levels, if you give me a couple of hours of extra good storyline, you know, for a reasonable price, I'll go ahead and buy it. But microtransactions start to really take the piss, and I think gamers as a whole are somewhat wary of them, but they're starting to creep into other aspects of gaming, and I, I don't really like them, if I'm just totally honest. I have to say that some companies do DLC absolutely in the best way possible. I actually think that um, Ubisoft do DLC pretty damn fantastic ways. For example, look at Far Cry Blood Dragon. Uh, which is a standalone title, Assassin's Creed, um, 
pretty much the same thing. That's not to say that, of course, the companies always get it right, but riddling launch titles specifically with microtransactions isn't really the way to go, in my opinion. It leaves a nasty tafing, nasty taste, I'm sorry, in gamers' mouths. It doesn't really make you want to buy the game because then you feel that to get the best out of it, you have to cough up extra cash. Not really the way to go. Okay, so what about the 1080p, 720p resolution issue? Well, kind of a PR answer. Uh, Eagle pointed out, let's be clear, the Xbox One fully supports 1080p at 60 frames per second. Forza Motorsport 5 is an example of a game that delivers that. It's up to individual developers to determine what is the best balance in order to deliver the best experience to gamers. No longer can one measure or talk about power in terms of per pixel and polygon counts. Performance in this era comes from free areas, hardware, software and cloud. There's a bunch of other stuff as well where they point out that that's the reason Titanfall Beta was so successful in regards to the dedicated servers. I kind of don't like Microsoft talking about specs anymore. I feel that it's a really bad move to discuss them because for the most part, people just, you can tell that's just such a PR answer and to talk, so to say to us that it's no longer about a power of pixel pushing, you know what, you might want to tell AMD that when they're creating a new graphics card, and you certainly might want to tell NVIDIA that when they're, you know, talking about the new Titan cards that they're producing. It just doesn't make sense. Um, software, of course, without software you can't run anything, but ultimately speaking, we know that there are limits on cloud rendering, specifically because of latency. So there's that problem. Honestly, I'm not going to retread over old ground, um, but I just feel that Microsoft should, should just give up on the power argument. I feel they should just be like, you know what, the console is powerful enough for what we need it to do, and we're going to consistently try to improve the system and uh, just focus on the games. I think that they should try to make sure that the system, I'm sorry, I can't speak today, which is annoying, they should just make sure the system is as best value as possible, and that's it. Now, of course, the cloud-based system for the Xbox One is really powerful. It's powered by Microsoft's Azure technology, and I actually have first-hand experience of Azure technology. I actually utilize and use it consistently for work. It powers several of our work servers, uh, production servers. And it's a cool piece of technology. Yes, it is missing some functionality, specifically regarding around the backup scenarios, uh, which is a somewhat different topic and not doesn't really belong in this Xbox video. But you can basically create a server, you know, write your application and deploy it to either directly to the server, or you can build yourself a nice server farm. You can have a server with less than a gigabyte of memory or you can have a server with well you know eight gigabytes 16 gigabytes whatever the hell you need and it's really cool in that respect but at the same time cloud technology it's not really that much more than a buzzword and an improvement over existing service technology that we've already had for quite a while microsoft are indeed using the gaikai network and their own um ties with Rackspace who are providing their cloud system, but they're not focused on the cloud rendering. They've also made it very clear, Microsoft, I mean, that we're not really going to be seeing that much from them in terms of new releases announced at GDC. Instead, we're going to have to wait for E3, which is a bit of a shame in my personal opinion. Uh, I feel that we'd benefit more as consumers or potential consumers to know what they've got in the works, even if it was just a short trailer, but I guess if they don't feel comfortable and ready to announce, it's better to wait. There's no point in showing us a piece of crap or just a logo, because who wants to see that? That just pisses people off more than not announcing the damn thing in the first place. So what are my opinions? Well, I have linked this... Um, interview in the video description you can by all means check it out my personal opinion is a lot of pr speak and doesn't really tell us that much more information i do personally believe one of the big issues microsoft has right now is it the specifications of the machine it's not 
the release schedule for the Xbox One. It's actually their communication with gamers. I think that's been a big issue. I think there's been several major mistakes Microsoft have made, and they are fixing them. That's the key thing. But the communication and how they're fixing them, that's been kind of a problem. It's been fairly consistent, and they're getting better at it, no doubt. But it still is enough to annoy certain people. Particularly now we've got this whole price cut fiasco, which early adopters are really angry about. I mean, some aren't, obviously. You get some that just don't really care that much. They're like, uh, well, I've had the system three months, fine, it's gone down in price. Others, they're pretty damn livid because to them, they feel that they've not only spent an additional £30 on a console, but they're losing out on a free game in on top of that as well. It's Titanfall, which is, for many, the reason they actually bought the Xbox One. So, do I think this is negative on Microsoft's part? No. I think they are making improvements on the system. I feel that the Xbox One is starting to finally pick up steam, but they need to drop this whole microtransaction thing. The whole idea of it is a business practice. I dislike Sony also riddled uh, Gran Turismo with it, and certainly there are other indications of it in the gaming industry. I'm not just calling Microsoft out on this. There are several other developers. I'm not going to bother to turn this into a microtransaction video because it's not really the place. But I feel they should just not do that with exclusives. Just don't. It, it just doesn't look good. It actually hurts the experience it, it ruins the experience of actually having an exclusive to then realize that the thing's riddled with microtransactions stop that crap stop speaking about the performance of the xbox one focus on the games wow us with the games and gamers will be cool with things just fix the last few issues with the ui you know most of it's fixed now like not being able to see the hard drive space the applications um were taking so that was just ridiculous like these little oversights they just annoy gamers and it's like why why would you do that it just makes absolutely no sense particularly when the xbox 360 you could do it the original xbox you could do it hell even consoles like the playstation 1 you could see how much space you bloody well had on your memory card so i'm just saying it just made no sense for these little tiny things and the tv problem particularly in europe Personally, didn't care, right? A lot of people I know who bought the Xbox One just didn't care about that in the EU because they didn't buy it for a TV machine. But others, well, it was affecting them and annoying them quite a bit if you just plonked down the money. So as I said, it's great progress for Microsoft, but they're certainly not out of the woods yet. Anyway... Let me know your thoughts on this. What would you like to see Microsoft announce on the Xbox One? What would, If you've not bought the system, what would you actually like for Microsoft to actually do? Would you, you know, is it just a case of maybe the system's still too expensive? Are you waiting more for exclusive titles? And so on. Sorry about the random uh, stumbling of my words today. I think it's because I'm thirsty or tired or God knows what. It's one of those random uh, quinky dinks. Anyway. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of a mixed bag, but positive steps in my opinion anyway from finally from MS. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.